Most of the nonsense you hear about a certain show being different because it breaks the mold or is refreshing or subverts what you came to expect out of something often comes down to an abuse of the term that defines something. For example, the definition of an isekai is simply when people from our world go to a different world. It doesn't go any further than that. The problem arises when a very specific subgenre is treated as if it covers the entire genre. For example, what most people consider an isekai nowadays is in reality a very specific subgenre that has been copied to death in light novels and has replaced the actual definition in most viewers' minds. Nowadays, an isekai is defined as a male otaku loser who gets transported to a generic fantasy setting that has a lot of video game terminology where he quickly becomes overpowered and creates a harem. That's way too specific and yet most viewers have generalized it to be the actual definition. The most ignorant amongst them take it even further and treat any show with a fantasy setting and gaming terminology as an isekai. Thus, all of a sudden, anime such as Danmachi and Goblin Slayer count as isekais. And that's where the abuse of subversion comes in. In reality, you can never subvert a core genre because the definition is simple enough and wide enough to include most of everything. I mean, how can you break the formula of an actual isekai? By not transporting people to a different world? Then it's not an isekai! Same thing goes with the difference between fantasy and science fiction. One uses magic, the other uses technology. It doesn't go any further than that. And in case it has both, they just call it science fantasy. That's all there is to the definition. You cannot subvert that. Going back to anime, when you hear someone calling My Hero Academia or One Punch Man a subversion of fighting shonen, what exactly is there to subvert? Do you know how simple the definition of a fighting shonen really is? As long as you have boys who are often fighting, you got yourself a fighting shonen. It doesn't go any further than that. What everyone wrongfully calls a subversion is anything that slightly deviates from the Naruto formula. A boy that starts off at the bottom and wants to be the best at something and constantly trains and fights as he goes up the ranks. The best thing you can say is that something is not an exact Naruto clone, which by itself is a generic underdog plot you can find in any sports series in general, from which you can also not deviate without turning it into a different genre. So what does that make all those shows that are often called the subversions and deconstructions for doing things differently? To the most part, those are just dark takes. That is, not letting the main characters have it their way all the time. Everyone is so used to seeing the protagonists win in every fight and nobody they love dying, so when a show comes along with defeats or deaths of lovable characters or negative consequences of any sort, it's enough to label it a deconstruction. It's unlike anything we've seen before! You didn't see that coming! It blew your mind! The thing is, in most of those shows, the consequences are not permanent. Since they find some bullshit way for taking them away eventually. This is why a show is not deconstructing if it goes back to how it was at first. But even any show that doesn't go back to how it used to be is still not a deconstruction. All it does is stop being one genre or subgenre and becomes a different genre or subgenre. So it's a lose-lose situation.